we have understood the process of ultrafiltration. And because of this ultrafiltration, there is filtrate which is formed in the Bowman's capsule or basically it comes into the tubule now. So let us first see what exactly is there in this nephric filtrate and how much of this nephric filtrate is formed. So uh, just a quick thing, when filtration takes place, ultrafiltration, that means through this glomerulus, the filtrate which accumulates here, this is the one that, that we are talking of. The pressure at which this filtration takes place is the glomerular filtration pressure and we have calculated that it is 10 millimeters of mercury. So the liquid that comes here is known as the nephric filtrate or it is also known as primary urine. We don't call it urine. The reason is it has many important things. So what all things are there in this nephric filtrate? The nephric filtrate has water, it has glucose, it has amino acids. <clears throat> These are the things which are very important and we want to take them back and that is where the second step is going to work. That is reabsorption, selective reabsorption. So those things which are essential for us, they would be reabsorbed by this tubular part. So water, glucose, amino acids, certain vitamins, ions, potassium ions, sodium ions, these things are present. Plus, urea, uric acid, these are to be eliminated but they are still there because everything which can pass through these capillaries comes here. So basically, the nephric filtrate is formed by filtration of the plasma which is here. So nephric filtrate is pretty much same as plasma, blood plasma minus. There are no cells. Cells are not there. That is RBC, WBC platelets are not there. So minus cells and mainly the proteins and proteins. So this is what is nephric filtrate and it is isotonic to plasma. Reason it has pretty much the same thing except the cells that is RBC, WBC platelets and the proteins which are the bigger molecules. So they are not there. Most of the carbohydrates are not there but glucose is there. Fat or fatty substances are also not there. So this is what gives us the nephric filtrate that is plasma minus cells and mainly proteins is what is nephric filtrate plus it is isotonic to plasma because it has pretty much same composition except for these few things now coming to the volume which is coming through this glomerulus and uh, how much gets filtered the amount of blood which enters or passes through all the glomeruli of all the nephrons of both the kidneys is 650 milliliters six fifty milliliters of plasma basically is going through passes through all nephrons of both the kidneys and this is per minute. So this is of plasma per minute passes through all the nephrons of both the kidneys. This is known as renal plasma flow. So how much is renal plasma flow? It is 650 milliliters per minute. Now when this much of plasma flows through all these glomeruli, some amount must be getting filtered. So that is known as the nephric filtration rate. 
or glomerular filtration rate. G F R that is glomerular filtration rate. Out of the 650 milliliter of blood or plasma which is going through all the nephrons, only 125 milliliters gets filtered. So here it is 125 milliliters per minute gets filtered through the capillaries. That means in a minute, 650 milliliters of blood is going to go through all the glomeruli of all the nephrons of both the kidneys. We call it renal plasma flow. That means the amount of blood which is flowing through these capillaries. 650 flows through it and only 125 milliliters get filtered here. So out of 650, 125 gets filtered. This is known as glomerular filtration rate. Glomerular filtration pressure is 10 millimeters of mercury and glomerular filtration rate that means the filtrate which is formed per minute is 125. If we calculate this value and see how much of filtrate would be formed in a day. So that would be 150 to 180 liters of nephric filtrate is formed in a day. This value is per minute. If we calculate for a day, this would come to 150 to 180 liters of nephric filtrate formed per day. Here we are talking about day. Here we are talking of a minute. So if this much, this is not even the volume of our blood, it is many, many times more than the blood. So there is reabsorption. Most of the substances are going to get reabsorbed. And finally, only 1.5 to 1.8 liter of urine is excreted. So this value is written as the daily urine output. So now when we are again coming back to this, these values, how much blood is going through all the glomeruli of all the nephrons of both the kidneys is 650 milliliters. We call it renal plasma flow. Out of this, only 125 milliliters gets filtered per minute. This is glomerular filtration rate, the rate at which this filtration takes place. So 125 milliliters of nephric filtrate would be formed in a minute. If we calculate it for a day, that value comes to 150 to 180 liters of nephric filtrate that is formed in a day. But as you can say, see here, that only 1.5 to 1.8 liters of urine is excreted. That means most of the substances or most of the water which is there gets reabsorbed. So this is the daily urine output. And this is important because this is the total volume of the nephric filtrate which is going to be formed. Many a times when we see this, there is a range or sorry, there is an average given. It is normally 172 liters. This is the average, but the range is 150 to 180 because the urine volume depends on so many factors, liquid intake, sweat or loss of water through sweat or uh, some kind of diuretic if a person has taken. So there are factors which we would take up later on. So. The filtration has taken place, nephric filtrate is formed and now we know the composition of nephric filtrate also. From this nephric filtrate, the important things are to be absorbed. Glucose, amino acids, we cannot afford to eliminate or lose these things. And here the vitamins that we are talking of, they are water soluble. Fat soluble vitamins, they don't uh, come in the urine part. So, water-soluble vitamins like vitamin C or D. 
ions are also there plus there is the waste material also like uric acid urea which are to be eliminated so we would see the absorption of useful substances and some of this absorption also takes place we will see why this happens and that would happen in selective uh, reabsorption but before that we need to know which substance is high threshold substance high threshold substance means it should be absorbed completely low threshold substances which are absorbed in small quantities and third non threshold substances which must not be absorbed at all so when we start with selective reabsorption we will start with the threshold substances